Hi everyone, and you are welcome to this lecture, Python Strings. In this lecture, I'm going to define what a string is. We will see what are the different ways to create a string. We will learn about special characters, and we will see how they work. We will learn about operators that can be used with a string. We will see how we can use indexing to get access to string content. Also, we will learn about string slicing. And as usual, I will end up this lecture by a quick summary. So let's get started. So, what's a string? String simply is a sequence of characters enclosed within quotes. String is very common data structure, and you are using this data structure a lot in your daily life, even if you are not a programmer. So for example, when you sign up for a new website, you will enter your first name, last name, email, password, and so on. And all of these fields are received and processed as strings. If you go to ATM and you want to withdraw money, you will enter the bin code, and also this bin is a string, and so on. Now let's see the details about strings. First of all, the syntax. If you want to create a string, you have to use pairs of a single quote or a double quote or a triple quote. And later on in the code session, we will see what is the difference between all of this. You have to know that string is an ordered data structure. In other words, each one of its items, characters, has its own known and fixed location. String is not mutable. Once you create, you cannot update. And this is a very important idea to keep in mind. String is an indexed collection, so I can use integer indexes, whether they are positive or negative, to access to each element inside the string. And the last idea, you have to know that string supports slicing, so you can use slicing to extract a substring from your string. Now let's move to PyCharm IDE to see some code examples about strings. First of all, I'm going to create a string, its name string, and I will put the content to be welcome to Python. Word. Now, let me print this string and also let me print the type of this string. And let's check what we will get. As you see here, this is my string, welcome to Python word. And the type of that string is str, which means string. You note here that I use a single quote to define a string. Let me now change this single quote to double quote and run. I will see exactly the same result and the type also a string. Now, let me change this double quote to triple quote and run. Again, you will see exactly the same result and the type is string. And as you see here, I use triple quote of double quote. Let me use now triple quote of a single quote as this and run. As you see also the same result and the type is string. I'm sure right now, the question that rises in your mind, what are the differences between all of these types of quotes? Look, if you want to create a string, it's not a problem what type of quotes you want to use. But there are some points you have to consider. The first point I want to mention is, assume that you want to define a string like the following. I want to say, I am a Python programming language developer. As you see here, in this string, I use quote as one of character inside this string. In this case, because single quote is a character, you cannot use single quote to define this string. You have to use double quote in this case. As you see here, I use double quote because I'm using single quote as one letter inside the string. And the rule exactly the same. If your string has double quote, you cannot use double quote to define that string. So let me remove both now. So here I have double quote here, for example a double quote and so on so how can I define a string which has double quote you have to use single quote in this case as you see here so when I use single quote it works without any problem and if I run I get this result now sure you will ask yourself what if I want to use both double quote and single quote inside the same string in this case, for example, if I put here double and single, look, single code is not applicable anymore. So I will remove it and you have to use triple code. As you see here, I'm using a triple code and both double code and a single code is available inside my string. One more idea about triple code. If you want to write your strings over multiple lines like this, you can do that only with the triple code. So if you try to write your string over multiple lines using single code or double code, you will get an error and the program will not run properly. Let me run now. And as you see, I see my string over multiple lines. And that's everything for how you can create a string. Now let's move to the next idea, which is special characters. When you define a string in Python, some characters has a special meaning. Let me show you what I mean by this. If I say now, hello, Python. As you see here, I just say, hello, Python. And I want to print, I will get hello, Python. 
Let me now put the letter N in the middle and what I will get hello N Python. Now, if I put backslash before this N, look now the color becomes different. If you run, you will see now that my string has been printed over two lines. I have hello, new line, Python. In other words, backslash N will create a new line in your string, even if you don't move to a new line in your code editor. Backslash N is used a lot when we want to format strings or if you want to print a very long string so you can divide this string over multiple lines. One more special character, which is backslash T. And look now, if I print, you will see here I have around six spaces, which is tab space. So backslash T is known as tab space, and it will create around six spaces in your string. And that's all about special characters. Now let's talk about operators that can be used with the strings. Let me assume that I have the following two strings. String one equal to hello, string two equal to work. If I say new string equal to string one plus string two, and I print the result, which is a new string in this case, run. As you see, I get one string, which is hello world. So in other words, plus sign work as a concatenation operator in context of strings. In other words, if both operands are string, plus will work as a concatenation. Now also, you have to know that string supports concatenation and assign. So I can say string1 plus equal string2, for example. And then let me print string1, run. As you see here, string1 become hello world, which means I concat string2 to string1, and the final result has been assigned to string1. Now let's see one another operator. Let me say new string equal to string1 asterisk 5. And now I will print this new string and run. As you see here, I get string one five times. In other words, asterisk operators in context of string work as a repetition operator. So this operator will repeat this string according to the number that you put here. Also string support repetition and assign. So if I say string one asterisk equal five, and then I print string one run, I will get hello five times and note now the result is string one. So what happened? String one has been repeated five times and the final result has been assigned to the same variable which is string one. The last operator I want to talk about is membership operator. Membership operator helps you to know if one or multiple characters are available inside your string. So for example, let me ask this question. Is each letter is available in string one? Yes or no? How to know that? I will do the following. I will say result equal to capital H in which is membership operator string one. And then I will print the result. And as you see here, I got true. Why true? Because H is available in string one. Let me say HE run. Also, I got true because I have HE here in string one. What if I put, for example, H and then run? I will get false. Why false? Because H is small letter, whereas H here is a capital letter and string is case sensitive. In other words, H small letter is different from H capital letter. One more question. What if I put H here and I say H in string? If I run, I will get error. Why error? Because name H is not defined. So don't forget to put code around the letter that you want to test. Otherwise, this letter will be considered as a variable, but there is no variable with the name H until now. So the interpreter will give me an error in this case. If you want to know if H is not available inside string one, simply you can say not in. So in will check if it's available, not in will check if it's not available. In this case, H is not available inside string one. So I will get it true. Why true? Because H is not in string one. And that's all for these operators. Now let's talk about string indexing. Let me assume I have the following string, which is hello world. And I want to get access to the first item inside this string. Simply, I will say print string and I will use square bracket zero run. This will give me H, which is the first letter of my string. What if I want to get access to the third element? Third element, which means zero, one, two. So the index is two and I will put two here and run. As you see here, I get L, which is the third element inside this string. Keep in mind also that negative indexing is supported. So in this case, if I want to get access to the letter D, like this case, I can say string minus one. And here, when we put negative index, we start counting from the last item. So minus one means the last item. In other words, it's D letter. Let me run. I will get D. 
The final idea I want to talk about is string slicing. Now let me assume I have the following string, which is hi Python developers. Assume I want to extract a substring from my string, in this case, the word hi. As you see, the word hi start in the first location. So I will put zero and it will end in zero, one. So it's in the location one. So I have to put here two. Why two? Because as I mentioned in the previous lecture, when we use slicing, we move from start to end minus one. Now let me run. As you will see, I will get hi. Assume I want to extract Python, for example. So I will say 0, 1, 2, 3. So I will start counting from 3 until 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I will put here 9. Again, from start to end, minus 1. And I will get Python in this case. The last idea is if I want to use negative indexes for slicing. So for example, I want to extract the word developers. So I can say, give me the elements from minus 10 to minus one run i will get the word developer as i say here if you want to get access to the last element you can do the following don't put anything at all and run in this case python will understand that you want to move from minus 10 to the last element of this string let me now get back to the idea of high i say when i want to extract high i say zero two two if i run i will get high also if i remove this zero and run I will get the same result and why this happened because if you don't put start value by default it's zero value and that's all for this code session now let's summarize what we have learned in this lecture first of all i have defined what's a string and as we see string it's a sequence of characters and this sequence of characters could be enclosed within single quote double quote or triple quote we see that string, it's an ordered data structure. It's not mutable, it's indexed, and it supports slicing. You have to use single quote when the string has double quote and vice versa. You have to use triple quote when the string has both single quote and double quote. And you have to use the triple quotes when you want to define a multi-line string. Some characters in Python have a special meaning like backslash in, which mean go to a new line, backslash t, which will create tab spaces, and that's all. Now please refer to Python string appendix in which you will find all operators have been summarized. Also please refer to Python strings challenges in which you will find some challenges to practice what you have learned. Thank you very much for your time and if you are available join me in the next lecture.